Previously on Can You Roll a Crit? So for season three, this is entirely guesswork, right? So for setting, obviously we're probably just going to get one box and then upgrade sprues for terrain. But I really hope it's jungle. Jungle, jungle for life, you know? It's just jungle. It's going to be jungle. There's a jungle planet, ocean, jungle next to the ocean. Space, jung space jungle, you know? In a mountain, jungle mountain. Anything's possible as long as it's jungle. Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video where today I'm talking about jungle rules for Kill Team and I've just woken up. Um, but before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought about jungle. We're back in jungle. Everything's jungle. Uh, and remember, I've got a Discord you can check out in the episode description below and a Phil and Kellerman Games and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But yeah, I'm going over the jungle rules, which were leaked from White Dwarf. So... Uh, I'll be thanks to let me bring him up because it wouldn't be uh, one of my discord users flanking Fox so thank you they got their white dwarf somehow before everyone else so they sent me this I am actually a white dwarf subscriber so I was waiting for my copy but it hasn't turned up yet I'll be talking about the jungle rules and then what terrain you can use to help represent jungle terrain for your games because I love jungle so jungle jungle everybody jungle let's get into it in this White Dwarf, which is the December issue for 2023, you just get six cards as you can see above. So these six cards, there's no rules, as in you, that's all the six cards, and there's no attaching article in the White Dwarf about how to use them. So it took me a while to figure out, but I believe you, I, I assume <laughs> you use one card for each game. So you pick a card, and then you play that as the effect for the game. If you're crazy, you can use more than one. I would recommend just one at a time. So let's go through them each. So first we've got Hanging Creepers, which is each time an operative finishes their, act their activation within white of an objective marker on a D6 on a free up. When determining control of that objective marker, you treat their APL as being one less until the start of their next activation. Note this is not a modifier, so it's kind of like a reverse banner. So effectively, you can count as like one APL for an objective or two if you're a Marine. So that's kind of nice. I think that's the most balanced and interesting one from a fairness sake. So then you have Spiker. So each time an operative makes a shooting attack, it gains the sp a Spiker token. Each time an operative makes a shooting attack against an enemy operative with a Spiker token, its ranged weapons gain the Mortal Wound 1 critical hit rule for that shooting attack. At the end of each shooting attack, remove the Spiker token, if any. So you have this weird thing where the first person to shoot not only goes on engage, but then they get the target of being mortal wounds one. But then the weird thing is, once they've been shot at, it goes away. And if the target, even if they didn't kill them, the person who shot them now gains a spiker token. So it's kind of like this weird pass the parcel Chinese whispers kind of thing. So it's, it's confusing, but not too bad unless you're playing into Phobos, who will just be like, oh... Oh, my guns get more wound one and I have lethal five up. Anyway, so then you have the Catachan Brain Leaf. At the end of each operative's activation, if that operative has not performed a charge, fall back, or normal move action during this activation, it gains a Brain Leaf token. In the next turning point, while a friendly operative has a Brain Leaf token, it isn't eligible to be activated until all other friendly operatives without a Brain Leaf token have been activated. When the operative is activated, remove its brain leaf token. So as it says, if you don't have a move, if you don't move, charge, or or fall back, you effectively in the next turning point will activate in the order of if like you have several operatives with brain leaf tokens, then you get to choose, but they activate last. So it's kind of punishing to I guess comms and like support units that don't make a shoot, which is weird. It's a confusing one, but that's Maybe one you can double up on. Then you've got Terra Squirrel. <laughs> While an operative is within white square, which is probably just blue, so three inches of an objective marker, worsen the ballistic skill and weapon skill characteristic of the operative by one. This is not cumulative would be injured. So it's basically it's a really, really tiny squirrels, and they they make you <laughs> worse to hit. Uh, so. And remember, it's three inches, right? We can try deciphering what a white square is, but it's easy just to go 
three inches. Hidden traps. Each time an object performs a new normal move and dash action in the same activation, at the end of the second move action, roll 1d6 on a free up and suffers one mortal wound. So this is great if you're playing against Harlequins, Elites, and especially Corsairs. Uh, so it's an interesting one. Kind of punishes teams being fast, but it's only one more wound. But I kind of like that. Then you've got the Katachan Devil, which is probably the most powerful of all the cards. At the start of each firefight phase, the player with initiative rolls 1d6, the Katachan Devil attacks at the start of that activation, or the start of the last activation of the turning point, whichever comes first. For example, if the result is 2, the second operative to be activated during the turning point is attacked at the, at the start of the operative's activation. Row 1d6 on a 1 to 2, nothing happens. On a 3 to 5, they suffer d3 plus 2 more wounds. On a 6, it suffers d6 plus 2. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> like, it's just roll a d6 and then see who dies by rolling another d6. Kind of too good, but also very situational. I think it's kind of worse if you're playing it against elites because the moment an elite player triggers this, they're either suffering nothing, four mortal wounds on average, or potentially five to eight, which is kind of crazy. But that's it for the cards. So now we've seen the cards, and as I recommend, you know, you use one per game, or if you're feeling dangerous, you know. Uh, but now I'll go over like terrain you can use to actually represent jungle boards because that's conspicuously left out. And I think it's still possible to do. So one thing I'll do is I'll reference the White Dwarf article from I think last year, which gave us terrain guides. So one of, well, not terrain traits, right? So one of the things it did was give us the rule dense for trees. So dense is each time an operative makes a shooting attack, if a cover line drawn to the intended target covers more than one terrain feature with this trait, the in intended target is obscured. You basically have to run multiple sets of trees. So for trees we could use, there's the Awakened Wildwoods from Games Workshop. Now, the only issue is they are quite expensive. And what you can do is place... Well, the good thing is you get free, right? I do have the old Citadel Wildwood, which, Wildwoods, which I prefer, but these are kind of more usable for Kill Team. So you could buy, like, three sets of this and then fill it with some random scatter. I would give these the Dense, Light, and Traversable traits because Dense kind of makes it obscuring. Like you could argue you could make the trees heavy, but I would personally make them light, traversable and dense. And then you just kind of scatter the trees around. You may want to add like free mun munitorium containers, but awakened wildwoods are a good thing. Like I would run at least two sets to make a good board with trees. These are also one of the few terrain sets that are still in stock because I was going to do a terrain video, but all the terrain is out of stock. For example, you could buy the Warcry terrain if it was in stock. Although I wouldn't really use the Ravage Land sets because it has too much masonry. I would try and find one of the older Warcry boxes because they have more trees and they have more of these walkways. Like if you can find the first box, which I have, I forget the name of, of the, of the jungle, like the Gur season. That's pretty good because you get about three to four big trees and then enough like scattered trees to provide like light cover. And then you can use these as like just vantage points. So you could use that. Unfortunately, if you have bought those and can't find them on eBay and stuff, you could use the Ravage Land Scales or Talaxis. But like the issue with most GW terrain at the moment, it's out of stock. So either use two to three sets of Awakened Wild Woods with like three Munitorium containers, or use the Awakened Wild Woods but then mixed in with the Ravage Land set scale of Talaxis or some other version of the Warcry terrain. Remembering to give the trees light, maybe not traversable if they're just trees, because like if they're just trees on their own, that's fine. You can just walk around. The reason I'm saying traversable is just because of these parts. So they still provide some cover or you can just say they're ins insignificant, but I think it kind of messes up the footprint of the trees. So just making it all light and traversable. But yeah, that's pretty much it, kind of. A bit disappointing, you know. I was expecting a lot more than just cards. So the cards are great, right? There's just no guidance how to use them. So my main recommendation is using one card per game. You can draw one at random. And then if you wanted to go a bit further, you know, using actual terrain to represent a jungle, 
Like, you could even make, like, the good thing about the cards is that they kind of describe some scratch-built terrain they used to make for jungles, which I was really disappointed by. Like, I was just hoping we'd get a jungle terrain article talking about jungle with the jungle cards, how to use the jungle cards, how to use the jungle terrain, like, making jungle terrain. That had been too much! So it was kind of disappointing, and really is just weird. Uh, like, it's just throwing these cards in at random. Like, I think you could probably get away with using two cards per game, but I think I would just, you know, play out one. Maybe if you're playing a campaign, ramp it up. Like, maybe play the last game with all six in use. That would be very fun. But yeah, I would use, like, two to three sets of Awakened Wildwoods with some Munitorium containers all mixed in with Warcry terrain, and then you could make some cool terrain. Personally, I was... I'm still holding out for the jungle season, you know, where it's all light terrain with vantage points. But if you're in a vantage point at the end of or start of any action, you know, you take D6 mortal wounds because there there's like carnivorous plants everywhere. Uh, don't use the, the, you know, the death world terrain. I mean, you could use it as scatter. It's just horrible. Like, it's just bad. But that's kind of it. So hopefully I made it more usable in terms of what else you can do to make your board's more jungle and your games of Kill Team more jungle because I'm a big jungle fan. Jungle, jungle, jungle forever, jungle for life. But yeah, that's it. So the key thing is try and use at least one card per game. You know, don't don't stress about, about the white square, right? It's just three inches. We'll just go with just three inches. And then try and use some trees as well as war cry terrain using the walk, um, the dense rule from the previous White Dwarf article, which I showed in the video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks to Flanking Fox for showing these cards early, because, you know, I was planning to, but that's pretty much it. Please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Were you kind of disappointed for the jungle rules? Or are you hyped for jungle? Are you going to build your own jungle boards and play them and show me? I mean, I might. We'll see. But remember, I've got a Discord you can check out in the episode description below for free, and a fill in Kalem Games, and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support, and I'll quickly shout out my Patrons. So, for my adepts of the crew, I have Tom, Sam, Nikki, Nick, Mr. Meatwad, Kenzie, John Thomas, Dad of Goldens, Ben, and for my veterans of the crew, I have Sam just. So thank you so much for all your support. It really means a lot to me and helps support the channel. But yeah, this is surprise well not a surprise video, it's up before my schedule. But this is gonna be a crazy week because we've got a balanced data slate. You know, we've got season three coming in five weeks. Ooh, ooh, mm, oh, nice. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of random videos this week. Well, depending on when the balance state slate goes up. But exciting. We've even got a white dwarf battle, well, not white dwarf, you know, Warhammer Plus battle report with the new season. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But yeah, so I, I need to get back to painting. I'm actually painting a few new kill teams at the moment because I'm like, why not? Just paint everything, John. But yeah, that was my look at Jungle Terrain. Hopefully it's people like it because it's like I was confused at first because I found these cards last night at like 10 a.m. at 10 p.m. I was like, ah, it's not just going to be the cards. They'll, they'll drop an article. And there was like, there's no article. And I'm just like, if I'm struggling to figure out how to use these cards, how's it going to work for everyone else? But yeah, hopefully this helped. But remember, until next time, no matter what happens in the jungle, you're always safe as long as you can roll a crit.